what is up everybody welcome to or back to the channel i am of course tactical pineapple this is pineapple's garage once again look at this guys another episode pineapple's garage it's amazing right i'm actually producing content again the weather is fucking gorgeous it's absolutely insane um it's still a bit windy but you know what you kind of need the wind when it's 90 fucking degrees outside. Uh, so a week ago we were freezing temperatures. Today it's 90 degrees. It's kind of hilarious listening to everybody complain, but uh, it is what it is. So I'm literally doing this video kind of just to, to talk about this quad block here. Um, I had a picture on Instagram yesterday, the other day, whenever it was, uh, that I just received this quad lock. I'm not a huge fan. The, the the thing is actually not so horrible, but uh, it's not very mountable, at least on stock Harley bars. And I know, I know, but Mr. Pineapple, why do you have stock Harley bars? Because I haven't changed them, and yes, I fucking know it's something that I need to do. I really do. I'm typically used to riding with 16-inch shape hangers. Um, since I got the bagger, I never switched over, and I don't know why. Um, I put a lot of miles on, and it's not horrible riding in this position, but I definitely fatigue faster, so it is something we are going to be doing on the channel. We are going to be switching these bars over. Um, I have some custom manufactured ones. Um, I say that because they are custom. I made them myself. I'm currently working on getting the holes drilled into the chrome molly, which if you don't know, chrome molly doesn't drill out the easiest. That being said, um, they are basically stock bars, but they are, you know, increased in height by about seven inches. So uh, stock Harley bars on a bagger like this are seven and a quarter inches rise, and uh, the new ones should should be right around a 14 inch. Uh, it's not gonna be the 16 that I'm used to, but I also don't need that big of a reach. Just trying to get everything out kind of at arm's length, up at shoulder height, where, the, where it's supposed to be. So uh, it's definitely gonna be a, a better ride position. I think it'll be a lot more comfortable. And then those bars are actually going to be painted to match the gray out that I've been doing on the chrome. Uh, not all of it's done, obviously, you can see from the glare here. We've still got a lot of bit of chrome to remove from this motorcycle. Even down to the bezels on the freaking thing here, we're going to get rid of all of that. Uh, not a fan of just straight blackout. Uh, trying something completely different. And uh, you can kind of see it down here at those lights. There's a graying out. It is actually a charcoal gray metallic paint that I'm putting in place. Um, it matches the pinstriping that's on the tanks. So it, it's, it's a process. It is definitely a process removing chrome from a motorcycle, so uh, you gotta bear with me. I would like to take video of the process, but I'm a horrible content creator when it comes to not being on a motorcycle or not being in my studio, so uh, I try. I've done a video or three. Uh, I think I've actually only posted one, but you know, we work our way through. We, we get shit done. But back to the topic at hand, the quad lock system. Uh, it does hold the phone secure, so that being said, I, I do appreciate that. If I was going to use the GPS or I was going to use Bluetooth for my audio, it would be perfectly fine. I, I can see the screen if I have to. Um, it's not exactly in a, a secure, safe position you know, for me to do that all the time. But I did try even just doing a live stream the other day. And, and it worked out pretty well, but it kind of just, it's an awkward angle and it's not really feasible to get it in a better position, at least that I've, I've seen so far. One of the reasons that I also don't like it is I actually had to remove my clutch master cylinder over here to, to get that fucking thing mounted, right? So the clutch itself is hydraulic on the 2014 street line. With the hydraulic clutch, obviously you need the hydraulic reservoir. The hydraulic reservoir is mounted really close to the bar and it takes up all of the flat spot that's in decent location on that bar. So I had to remove that. Not horrible, it's just two torque screws. Um, put the clamp on and then reposition it over the clamp. Now 
obviously that means that I'm not perfectly flush down to the bar I'm not rounded perfectly onto it again so there's a little bit more tension on that but I feel like it's not horrible and it's definitely something that's doable and, and, and it's not going to really hurt anything um, I do have to attempt to reposition it I'm going to give it its fair shake uh, but as far as a motorcycle mount I don't necessarily like the bar clamp style the ball mount probably would be better because you obviously have infinite 360 degree uh, a spherical adjustment which obviously gets you much closer to wherever you want to have it um, and even then you can mount it down further on the bar and, and it'd probably be pretty cool you know um, I decided with this one you know just to go this route try it out because I wasn't sure how I was gonna even like having these things on the bar uh, what I would really use it for um, it's not exactly safe to do a live stream from the motorcycle right for a lot of reasons uh, I did it it's not horrible and if you guys don't mind just riding along that's probably okay but I'm, I'm guessing you guys would much rather prefer the view coming out of this camera than a view from this camera staring at me because even though it looks shitty right now with the the browns and the, the light grays and all that shit because you know spring hasn't really fully sprung here um, it's definitely a situation where uh, it still looks better than me so um, yeah and I apologize for that and we will get other camera views going again uh, before the end of this year I do have a 360 degree camera that will be put in place and I've got another couple GoPros I will mount in various positions and get a couple different camera angles so there's a little bit more excitement to the ride uh, that being said I'm I'm guessing that's similar to last time the audio is coming through much more crisp and much better uh, I like this new audio setup from what I've done over winter it seems to be uh, pretty good which means I just have to permanize it uh, permanent it however you want to say it I need to make it permanent uh, <laughs> right now there's things floating in my helmet basically it's perfectly safe because it's down it's in the chin guard there's other things that are just wrapped around so I will make it more permanent now that I know that the audio is that much more crisp it is that much better um, it also makes the editing flow even greater because uh, for those of you who don't know last year I was using the shockwave audio from my Rurox 2.0 helmet which is loud it's not great uh, it is semi distorted the microphone is okay but as long as you get a good quality process in you can you can edit out a lot of a lot of the noise that you actually get but the issue with that is obviously it's not direct uh, so I do have that now running into or getting the audio from one of my purple panda mics which I've used for my videos for quite a while um, that is wired inside of the helmet running through the GoPro audio adapter straight into the camera so we're actually getting the audio and the video synced up right from the get-go which makes a huge fucking difference I don't have to do some clap or anything like that and get everything sunk you know synced up which realistically I probably didn't have to do in the past all that well anyways it could just be pretty close and it would have been fine but uh, I'm a stickler for it so there were definitely you know times where I spent a lot more time aligning things than I needed to um, it's freaking hot out though uh, yeah so then the audio obviously different with the visor open versus visor closed but with the wind noise you don't want it visor open for very long at all um, but yeah so the quad <laughs> I'm sorry I am getting so distracted this is a piss poor review of the quad lock system uh, I do feel that the quad lock system is secure now I'm not so concerned my phone is gonna go flying anywhere I did do the universal phone mount instead of getting the case simply because I enjoy the case that I have I like the case that I have and uh, putting 3m adhesive to the back of that case wasn't so concerning if I have to remove it I just use the razor blade peel the shit off and be good to go um, however I don't feel like it's a complete loss so as many of you know I am personally on a bit of a weight loss journey I have bought a pedal bike uh, because riding is riding right whether it's pedaling or you're driving on a motorcycle a bike is a bike two wheels is two wheels um, and I do get some enjoyment out of it now I'm obviously working my way up to being healthier and creating better stamina um, 
I'm 450 fucking pounds. I'm not a little boy. Uh, put me on a bicycle and I look like a monkey fucking a football. But you know what? I'm going to be a healthier monkey fucking that football when, I, when I'm done with this. So uh, I've worked up to over a mile riding uh, pretty easily. And uh, I'm looking forward to increasing that over the next uh, six months to a year. And then actually, you know, riding, having fun. Uh, that being said, this bike mount or motorcycle mount fits the handlebars on my bike perfectly. So I now feel as though this is the better option for the pedal bike. This does have the shock mount with it, uh, the shock mount or, you know, vibration dampener. I feel like it does an okay job. Watched the video from my live stream and it did pretty well. It didn't mess with the camera. So being that it did an okay job on the motorcycle, I imagine that it'll do a fantastic job on a pedal bike. Uh, pretty much anything I could do to it will probably be safe. Uh, so that's good there. I, I, like I said, I'm not going to completely write it off as a complete loss. The, uh, the deal is, is that there's just so many individuals who tout the quad lock as such a great motorcycle, uh, I, I guess, phone mount. I, I'm just not, I don't see it for motorcycle. And I'm sorry, quad lock. Uh, I did pay for this. Uh, you're getting my honest opinion. I am only a day into ownership of this. I did receive this literally yesterday. Um, there is some adjustments I'm going to make to it and see if I can make it work on the motorcycle. But at the same time, I do feel like it's a better option for the pedal bike. And on top of that, it takes the distraction away. This being here is quite a bit of a distraction. Um, there's glare that potentially comes off of it. And then there's always the opportunity for me to stare at it. Number one, I'm on the motorcycle. I don't necessarily want to stare at my fucking phone. Number two, um, it creates an opportunity for me to do stupid shit. And sometimes I don't need to be fucking having that opportunity. But uh, until next time, folks, this has been Tactical Pineapple, Pineapple's Garage. I will come back with a long-term review, maybe even put it on a pedal bike and show you guys what I think of it on there. Uh, I'll put some video from the, the ride in here and then uh, you guys can be your own judge. Uh, but my recommendation is, is if you're doing this for a motorcycle, skip it. Get yourself something that actually works. I don't know what it is. I haven't found it yet. Uh, I'm looking for some information in the description below though. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what it is.